Welcome to the HFY Tales channel. Remember to like and subscribe if you like the story. Enjoy and take care. The buzzing of distant machinery filled the air, a constant hum that seemed to burrow into Jack Marlowe's skull as he worked on a rusted panel of a massive Zelfer cargo ship. His hands were greasy, calloused from years of repetitive labor, but his movements were precise. He didn't need to think about what he was doing anymore. He had fixed so many of these ships that the task was automatic. Around him, the spaceport bustled with activity. The insectoid Zelther moved in their graceful, almost eerie way, their elongated limbs and sleek, chitinous bodies making them seem like something out of a nightmare. Yet here they were, the rulers of this sector of the galaxy, and humans like Jack were nothing more than workers, assigned menial tasks and considered little more than insects themselves. Jack wiped the sweat from his brow, leaving a streak of oil across his skin. The Zelther called humans insects not just because of their perceived weakness but because, to them, humans were a nuisance, small, insignificant, and easily replaceable. Every time Jack heard one of the Zelther nobles refer to a human as such, he could feel the weight of his anger bubbling beneath the surface. But he swallowed it down. Anger got you killed. He glanced around the spaceport. It was a marvel of Zelther engineering, a sprawling complex of platforms and hangars, each equipped with advanced tech that humans could only dream of understanding. The Zelther had a way of making everything look effortless, their superior intellects and telepathic communication giving them an edge in every way. Jack sighed, his gaze drifting toward the distant horizon where the human slums sprawled in the shadow of the spaceport. It wasn't much different from the colonies he'd grown up in, cramped, decaying, and always under the watchful eye of the Zelther overseers. Humans lived in fear, not only of the Zelther but of their own stagnation. Once, humanity had dreamed of reaching the stars, but now they were stuck, slaves to a race that considered them little more than vermin. As Jack tightened the last bolt on the panel, he couldn't help but feel the weight of his people's history pressing down on him. Insects, he thought bitterly. That's what they call us. That's what we've become. The afternoon sun was beginning to set, casting long shadows across the spaceport when Jack heard the unmistakable sound of an engine failure. His head snapped up just in time to see a sleek Zelter ship spiraling out of control, black smoke trailing behind it as it careened toward the ground. It crashed into the far side of the spaceport with a deafening roar, metal twisting and screeching under the impact. Jack didn't hesitate. He dropped his tools and sprinted toward the wreckage, his heart pounding in his chest. The Zelfer were many things, arrogant, condescending, but even they didn't deserve to be left to die in a burning ship. His feet pounded against the metallic floor of the port as he neared the crash site. The ship was in bad shape, a fire licking at the sides, its once smooth, insect-like exterior now crumpled and broken. Jack climbed over the debris and found the cockpit. Inside, a single figure was slumped over the controls, her body pinned beneath a collapsed beam. She was unmistakably Zelther, her chitinous armor shimmering in the light, though now cracked in places. Her multifaceted eyes flickered open, and she turned her gaze toward Jack. Help me, she said, her voice sharp and commanding, despite the obvious pain. Jack hesitated. He'd never been this close to a Zelther noble before. They rarely even acknowledged humans unless they needed something fixed. Now here was one, trapped, vulnerable, and in desperate need of his help. His mind raced through the possibilities. He could walk away. No one would blame him. The Zelther were the oppressors, the ones who kept humans in the dirt. But something in Jack couldn't ignore the suffering in front of him. He climbed into the wreckage, his hands working quickly to free her. She hissed in pain as he lifted the beam from her legs. Her armor was cracked, and dark, viscous blood oozed from the wound. You're lucky to be alive, Jack muttered, more to himself than to her. She turned her head toward him, her eyes narrowing. Spare me your human sentimentality, she spat. Do your job and get me out of here. Jack gritted his teeth but said nothing. He helped her to her feet, supporting her weight as they moved out of the wreckage. Once they were clear, she straightened herself, standing as tall as her injuries would allow. She looked down at Jack with cold, calculating eyes. You insects always know how to survive, don't you? She said, 
her tone dripping with disdain. Scrambling about in the dirt, never knowing your place. Jack clenched his fists, biting back the retort that burned on his tongue. He reminded himself that this was a Zelther noble. If he said the wrong thing, she could have him executed without a second thought. I do what I can to stay alive, Jack said, keeping his voice steady. The Zelther woman's eyes flickered with something, amusement, maybe, or annoyance. It was hard to tell with them. Humans, she muttered. So small. So weak. Before Jack could respond, the warning sirens of the spaceport blared to life. His stomach dropped. That sound could only mean one thing, an attack. The Zelther noblewoman, her arrogance momentarily replaced by a flicker of concern, looked around. What is happening? Jack grabbed her arm and pulled her toward cover. We are under attack. Tarkil raiders. The Tarkil were notorious throughout the galaxy, mercenaries and pirates who raided spaceports and colonies, taking whatever they could and leaving chaos in their wake. Jack had heard stories of what they did to Zelfer captives. The raiders didn't care for the galactic order. To them, the Zelfer were just as much prey as humans. We need to move, Jack said, pulling the noblewoman behind him as explosions rocked the spaceport. Tarkil ships descended from the sky, their weapons blasting holes in the infrastructure. We can't stay out in the open. The noblewoman staggered behind him, her injury slowing them down. You will not order me around, human, she hissed. Then feel free to stay here and die, Jack snapped, his patience finally fraying. The ground shook as another explosion went off nearby, and the noblewoman's resolve seemed to falter. She begrudgingly followed Jack, leaning more heavily on him as they moved through the chaotic spaceport. They ducked into a storage bay, the heavy door closing behind them with a loud hiss. Jack pressed his back against the door, breathing hard. Outside, he could hear the shouts of the Tarkil and the crackle of blaster fire. The noblewoman slumped against a crate, her face twisted in pain. This, this is unacceptable, she growled, clutching her wounded leg. Tell that to the raiders, Jack said, glancing around the dimly lit room. We can't stay here long. They'll be sweeping through this place soon. The noblewoman shot him a look of pure disdain, but she didn't argue. Jack could see the fear in her eyes now, the vulnerability that came with her injury. She wasn't as invincible as she liked to think. We need to get you out of here, Jack said, scanning the room for anything that might help. If they find you, they'll take you hostage. Or worse. She grimaced. I don't need a human to tell me what the Tarko will do. Then you should know I'm your best chance of getting out of here alive. For a moment, they locked eyes, the weight of the situation settling between them. The noblewoman, despite her arrogance, seemed to understand the truth of Jack's words. She gave a sharp nod. Very well, insect. Lead the way. Jack's heart pounded as he guided the Zelther noblewoman, Virka, through the dark, maze-like corridors of the spaceport. His mind raced with every step, trying to think several moves ahead, anticipating the Tarkil raider's every action. The spaceport, once a place he could navigate with ease, had become a death trap. Every hallway felt like it could be a dead end, and the sounds of distant explosions and blaster fire were growing louder. Virka was limping badly, her face contorted in pain, but she did her best to hide it. Her pride kept her from admitting how much she needed Jack, but he could tell by the way she leaned on him more heavily as they moved that she was close to collapsing. Where are we going, human? Vyrka asked through gritted teeth. Her breath was labored, and her voice had lost some of its sharpness. Maintenance tunnels, Jack replied, scanning their surroundings. If we can make it there, we'll have a chance to slip past the raiders unnoticed. They won't be familiar with the spaceport's layout. Vyrka scoffed. You think I should trust your pathetic human knowledge? I am a noble of the Zelther. I. Jack cut her off, his patience wearing thin. Look, you may think you're above us, but your status won't mean a damn thing if the Tarkil find us. If you want to survive, you're going to have to trust me. You may be a Zelther noble, but right now, you're wounded and outnumbered. 
Virka's eyes narrowed, and for a moment, Jack thought she might argue. But then, perhaps for the first time, she said nothing. She was in no position to challenge him, not with the injury slowing her down and the raiders getting closer. The reality of their situation was sinking in, and Virka, despite her arrogance, wasn't a fool. They continued through the winding halls, moving as quickly as they could. The dim emergency lighting cast long, eerie shadows, and every sound, every distant footstep or clatter of debris, set Jack's nerves on edge. The Tarko could be anywhere, and they didn't have much time. As they approached the entrance to the maintenance tunnels, Jack froze. The sound of footsteps echoed from around the corner. Tarkil Raiders. He motioned for Virka to stay still, his hand gripping her arm to keep her steady. She shot him a glare but didn't pull away. The footsteps grew louder, and Jack's heart raced. They were getting closer. He scanned the area, his mind racing. There was a small alcove in the wall, barely large enough for them to hide. Without thinking, he pulled Virka into the shadows, pressing them both against the wall. They were concealed in darkness, but the raiders would be close enough to hear if they made any noise. Virka stiffened as Jack's body pressed against hers, the proximity clearly uncomfortable for her. Jack could feel the tension radiating off her, but there was no time to think about that now. The raiders' footsteps were almost upon them. The Tarkil passed by, their heavy boots clanging against the metal floor. Jack held his breath, every muscle in his body tense. He could hear the raiders talking in low, guttural voices, though he couldn't make out the words. Seconds felt like hours as they waited, the raiders just a few feet away. Jack prayed they wouldn't be discovered. If they were, there would be no way to fight off the Tarkil in Virka's current state. Finally, the footsteps faded into the distance. Jack exhaled, releasing the breath he didn't realize he'd been holding. He stepped away from Virka, and she immediately straightened, her pride still very much intact. That was. Uncomfortably close, she muttered, brushing off her armor. Next time, human, I expect a better solution. Jack shot her a look, part annoyed, part amused. You're welcome, he said dryly. The two of them made it to the maintenance tunnels without further incident, though Virka's limp was getting worse with every step. Jack led her down the narrow, dimly lit passageways, his mind spinning as he tried to figure out their next move. They were safe for now, but they couldn't stay in the tunnels forever. As they paused to rest, Jack took a moment to examine Virka's wound. The armor around her leg had cracked, and dark selther blood seeped from the gash. She winced as Jack gently probed the injury. We need to get you medical attention, Jack said, frowning. You're not going to make it much longer like this. Virka waved him off, her face pale but determined. I am fine. A little pain will not stop me. Jack shook his head. That's not pain, that's a serious injury. You need help whether you like it or not. Virka glared at him, but there was a flicker of doubt in her eyes. Jack could tell she was struggling to maintain her composure, her pride keeping her from admitting how much pain she was really in. They sat in silence for a while, the air thick with tension. Jack leaned back against the cold metal wall, his mind racing. He wasn't sure what would come next. The Tarkil would eventually sweep through the tunnels, and when that happened, they'd be trapped. Virka's voice broke the silence, her tone quieter than before. You surprise me, human. Jack glanced at her, raising an eyebrow. How so? She stared ahead, not meeting his gaze. Your species? I have always thought of you as weak, insignificant. Insects, as we call you. But you. You have shown more strength and resilience than I expected. Jack frowned. You think we're insects because we don't have the same technology or physical power as you do. But strength isn't just about muscle or weapons. It's about surviving, adapting, finding ways to keep going when everything is stacked against you. Virka was silent for a moment, as if considering his words. Perhaps, she said finally. But strength also comes from power. Your kind does not have it. Jack felt a surge of frustration. 
You think power comes from controlling others? From being on top? That's not real strength. Real strength comes from fighting for what matters, even when the odds are against you. Virka turned to him, her eyes narrowing. You speak as though you believe humanity has a future beyond servitude. We do, Jack said, his voice steady. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but one day we'll rise. And when we do, we won't need to step on others to prove we're strong. Virka's gaze lingered on him, something unreadable in her expression. For the first time since they'd met, Jack saw a flicker of doubt in her eyes, a crack in the wall of superiority she'd built around herself. Perhaps, she said softly, her voice losing some of its edge. Perhaps there is more to your species than I have given you credit for. The dim glow of the maintenance tunnels wasn't enough to calm Jack's nerves. Every shadow seemed to shift, every noise an indication that the Tarkil raiders were getting closer. They couldn't stay hidden forever, and with Virka's injury worsening, they were running out of time. Jack knelt beside her, checking the makeshift bandage he had wrapped around her leg. It wasn't much, but it was the best he could do with the limited supplies they had. We need to move soon, he said, glancing at the tunnel entrance. If they find us down here, we'll have no chance of fighting back. Virka's breathing was ragged, her pride clearly struggling against the pain she was enduring. She leaned heavily against the wall, her once pristine Zelther armor cracked and smeared with dark blood. You speak as if there is somewhere else to go, she muttered, her voice filled with frustration. There is, Jack replied. But we'll need to be smart. I've got an idea. Vyarka raised an eyebrow. You think a human's plan can outsmart Tarkil raiders? They are trained in battle, far more ruthless than you. Jack gave her a tight smile. I'm not going to fight them head on. That would be suicide. But I can use what I know about this place to make sure we stay one step ahead. He stood up, motioning for her to follow. Vyarka hesitated for a moment, clearly not used to taking orders from a human, but with no other options, she slowly rose to her feet, wincing as she leaned on him for support. They moved deeper into the tunnels, navigating the narrow, twisting passages. Jack's heart was pounding, but he kept his focus on the task at hand. He knew these tunnels better than anyone, having worked on the spaceport's infrastructure for years. If anyone could outmaneuver the Tarkil, it was him. As they rounded a corner, Jack froze. His blood ran cold as he heard the distinct clatter of boots echoing down the tunnel behind them. The Tarkil had found their way into the maintenance system. They're close, Jack whispered, his voice tense. Virka's hand instinctively went to her side, but her weapon had been lost in the crash. She cursed under her breath, frustration evident in every stiff movement. Stay here, Jack said, lowering her against the wall. I'm going to create a distraction. I'll draw them away from this tunnel. Virka's eyes widened, and for a moment, Jack thought she might protest. But instead, she nodded slowly, her usual arrogance replaced by something else perhaps uncertainty or even fear. Be careful, she said quietly, her voice barely above a whisper. Jack gave her a reassuring nod before slipping down the tunnel. He moved quickly and quietly, his mind racing. He couldn't fight the Tarkil, but he didn't need to. He just had to lead them away long enough for him and Virka to escape. He reached the tunnel's junction, where several pathways branched off. Jack knew exactly where he was going. He'd spent months down here, repairing the old, forgotten systems of the spaceport. There was a pressure vent nearby, one that could be manipulated if you knew the right sequence of commands. Jack ducked into a small alcove, pulling up a panel on the wall. His fingers flew across the console as he activated the manual controls. He could hear the Tarko getting closer, their guttural voices echoing in the narrow tunnel. His heart pounded in his ears as he worked, sweat dripping down his brow. Just as the footsteps grew dangerously close, Jack hit the final command, and the pressure vent burst open with a deafening hiss. The sudden rush of air and steam flooded the tunnel, creating a blinding fog. Jack took the opportunity to slip away, knowing the Tarkil would be momentarily disoriented. He sprinted back toward Virka, his lungs burning from the effort. The tunnel was a maze of steam and shadows, 
but he knew the layout well enough to avoid getting lost. When he reached her, Vyrka was leaning against the wall, her face pale and drawn with pain. They're distracted, Jack panted, grabbing her arm to help her stand. We have a few minutes before they figure it out. Let's move. Vyrka didn't argue, allowing Jack to guide her down the tunnel. Every step was a struggle for her, but she kept pace, determination flickering in her dark eyes. Jack could tell she was pushing herself past her limits, her pride refusing to let her appear weak in front of him. They emerged from the maintenance tunnels into a section of the spaceport that had been damaged in the attack. Smoke billowed from the wreckage, and the distant sounds of battle echoed across the port. Jack led Vyrka toward the remains of a small control station, hidden from view by the collapsed walls. Stay low, Jack instructed, his voice quiet but firm. We need to wait until the Tarkal move on. Vyrka crouched beside him, her face contorted with pain, but her eyes sharp and focused. For the first time, she wasn't barking orders or mocking him. She was just. There, silent and watchful. The moments dragged on as they waited, the distant sounds of the raiders continuing their destruction. Jack's thoughts drifted to the conversation they'd had earlier, about strength and power. He could see it now, the cracks in Vyrka's arrogance. She wasn't invincible. None of them were. The quiet was shattered by the sound of an approaching group of Tarkil raiders. Jack's heart leapt into his throat as he realized they were getting closer, too close to avoid this time. He could feel the tension building between him and Vyrka as they both knew what was coming. We can't hide forever, Vyrka whispered, her voice laced with exhaustion. I know, Jack said grimly, his mind working through their options. They were running out of time. Then, it hit him. Get ready to run when I tell you, Jack instructed, his eyes scanning the wreckage around them. What are you going to do? Vyrka asked, frowning. I'm going to lead them away. You'll have a clear shot to the escape pods. Jack's voice was steady, but inside, he was bracing himself for what was coming. Vyrka grabbed his arm, her expression fierce. You cannot fight them alone. That is suicide. Jack smiled, though there was little humor in it. I'm not planning on fighting them. Just keeping them busy. Before Vyrka could argue further, Jack was already on his feet, moving away from their hiding spot. He could hear Vyrka cursing under her breath, but there was no time for hesitation. The Tarka were closing in, and if they found both of them, it would be over. Jack climbed over a pile of debris, making as much noise as possible. The raiders heard him instantly, their guttural voices growing louder as they turned toward him. He sprinted away, leading them deeper into the wreckage, his heart racing. Gunfire erupted behind him, and Jack dove behind a collapsed wall, narrowly avoiding the blast. He could hear the Tarkil shouting to each other, their heavy boots pounding against the ground as they closed in. Jack's mind raced. He needed to buy Vyrka more time. His eyes darted around, searching for anything he could use. Then, he saw it, a fuel line, exposed and damaged in the attack. If he could ignite it, he could create a massive explosion, distracting the raiders long enough for Vyrka to escape. He scrambled toward the line, his hands shaking as he worked quickly to rig a makeshift detonator. The Tarkil were almost on top of him now, their shadows looming just beyond the wreckage. With a final push, Jack connected the wires and set the timer. He took one last look around, hoping Vyrka had taken the opportunity to get to safety. Then, he ran. The explosion ripped through the spaceport, a deafening roar of fire and metal. Jack was thrown forward by the blast, his body slamming into the ground. Pain shot through him, but he forced himself to move crawling away from the wreckage as the Tarkal scrambled to recover from the explosion. He could barely see through the smoke and debris, but he knew he had succeeded. The Tarkal were distracted, their focus now on the destruction Jack had caused. Vyrka had her chance. Jack lay on the cold, hard ground, his ears still ringing from the explosion. His body ached from the impact, and every breath sent sharp pains through his chest. For a moment, he just lay there, trying to make sense of the chaos around him. 
The smoke still hung thick in the air, and he could hear the distant shouting of the Tarkil raiders as they regrouped after the explosion. But for now, Jack was still alive. Barely. He forced himself to sit up, wincing as he did so. His clothes were singed, and his hands were scraped and bloodied from the blast, but he didn't have time to think about the pain. His mind was focused on one thing, Virka. Had she made it? Had the explosion given her enough time to escape? Staggering to his feet, Jack peered through the smoke, searching for any sign of movement. The spaceport was in ruins, with fires burning in the distance and debris scattered everywhere. The Tarkil were still distracted, barking orders and trying to contain the fires. Jack had bought them time, but it wouldn't last forever. He needed to find Virka. Clutching his side, Jack began to limp through the wreckage, every step a reminder of the toll the past few hours had taken on him. His muscles screamed in protest, and his vision blurred from the pain, but he kept moving. He couldn't let himself stop now. After what felt like an eternity, Jack spotted a familiar figure crouched behind a pile of debris. Virka. She was alive. Virka, Jack called out, his voice hoarse. He stumbled toward her, relief flooding through him as he saw her turn toward him. She was battered, her armor cracked and smeared with blood, but she was alive. Virka's eyes widened as she saw him approach. She struggled to her feet, limping toward him. You fool, she hissed, though there was no malice in her voice. You could have gotten yourself killed. Jack managed a weak smile. I wasn't going to leave you to deal with the Tarkal alone. Virka shook her head, her gaze softening for a moment as she looked at him. You are an idiot, human, she muttered. But this time, there was something different in her tone. It wasn't the cold disdain she had shown him before. It was something closer to respect. Together, they found cover behind a collapsed wall, catching their breath. The sounds of the Tarkil searching the area still echoed in the distance, but for the moment, they were safe. You shouldn't have come back for me, Varka said after a long silence. Her voice was quieter now, lacking the haughty edge that usually accompanied her words. You didn't need to risk your life. Jack glanced at her, his expression serious. I wasn't going to let you die. No matter what you think of humans, we don't abandon each other. Not when it matters. Virka studied him for a moment, her multifaceted eyes reflecting the dim light of the fires. For the first time, Jack saw something shift in her expression. The arrogance, the superiority, it was still there, but beneath it was a glimmer of understanding, maybe even gratitude. You've surprised me, human, Virka admitted. You're not like the others I've met. Jack raised an eyebrow. Because I'm not an insect? Virka's lips curled into a slight, wry smile. Perhaps I was wrong to call you that. The spaceport was eerily quiet in the aftermath of the raid. The Tarkil had retreated, likely regrouping after the explosion, but for now, Jack and Virka had a small window of safety. The fire still smoldered, casting a faint orange glow over the ruins, but the worst of the destruction seemed to have passed. Jack and Virka made their way toward the emergency escape pods, their progress slow due to their injuries. Every step was a struggle, but they didn't stop. The weight of everything that had happened was settling in, but they were both alive. And that was what mattered. As they reached the pods, Jack could feel the tension in the air. This was the end of their journey together the moment where they would part ways. Virka, a Zelther noble, would return to her people, while Jack would remain behind in the ruins of the spaceport, just another human in a galaxy that saw them as insignificant. Virka paused at the entrance to the escape pod, turning to face Jack. Her gaze was intense, and for a moment, Jack wasn't sure what she was thinking. You saved my life, Jack Marlowe, Virka said quietly. More than once, that is not something I will forget. Jack shrugged, trying to play it off. I couldn't let the Tarkil have all the fun. But Virka didn't laugh. Her expression remained serious, her eyes searching his face for something. You are different from the other humans I have known, she said. You have shown me that there is more to your species than I had ever considered. Jack met her gaze, unsure of what to say. 
It was strange hearing those words from her, after everything she had said before about humans being insects. But now, standing here, wounded and exhausted, it felt like they had crossed some kind of invisible line. I was wrong to think of your kind as lesser, Vyrka continued. You have a strength that I did not see before. And for that, I owe you a debt. Jack shook his head. You don't owe me anything. I just did what anyone else would have done. Vyrka's eyes flashed. No, Jack. What you did was more than duty or survival. You risked everything for someone who saw you as nothing. That is not something many would do. For a moment, there was a silence between them, heavy with unspoken words. Jack could feel the weight of everything they had been through pressing down on him, but he didn't know how to respond. Then, Vyrka reached into a compartment on her damaged armor and pulled out a small, intricately designed device. She held it out to Jack, her hand steady despite the pain she was clearly in. What's this? Jack asked, frowning as he took the device. It is a communicator, Vyrka explained. A direct link to me. Should you ever need aid or assistance, you will have it. No matter what, I will come. Jack stared at the communicator, unsure of what to say. It was an unexpected gesture, especially from someone who had once viewed him as an insect. He looked up at Vyrka, seeing the sincerity in her eyes. I don't know what to say, Jack muttered, still in disbelief. You don't need to say anything, Vyrka replied. But know this, humans may still be seen as lesser in the eyes of the galaxy. But you. You have proven that your kind deserves more than to be called insects. Jack slipped the communicator into his pocket, nodding slowly. Thanks, he said softly. I'll keep that in mind. Vyrka gave him a small, almost imperceptible nod before stepping into the escape pod. As the door began to close, she locked eyes with Jack one last time. You are more than you know, Jack Marlowe, she said, her voice echoing in the small space. Do not forget that. With a soft hiss, the door sealed shut, and the pod's engines hummed to life. Jack watched as it lifted off, disappearing into the night sky. The spaceport was once again silent, save for the crackling of the fires in the distance. Jack stood there for a long moment, staring up at the sky where Varka's escape pod had disappeared. The weight of everything they had been through pressed down on him, but there was also something else, a sense of pride, of accomplishment. He wasn't just an insect. Not anymore. As he turned to leave, Jack's mind was already racing. The galaxy was vast, and there was still so much work to be done. But now, he knew one thing for certain, humans weren't just going to survive. They were going to rise. And one day, the galaxy would know exactly who they were.